Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss worthless securities and section 1244 stocks. We're going to start by discussing worthless securities. What are securities? Securities are any stocks, bonds, notes. And worthless mean when you have those notes and they go down to zero. Now, in case you're hearing some background noise, this is it's thundering out there. So just FYI, it's really raining and thundering. Now, I have my own experience with worthless securities during the dot com of 99. I purchased stocks in a company called Global Crossing. That's the company that laid down the fiber optic cables for the Internet you know, across the oceans. And what happened is this. I bought this company a little bit late in its growth stage. Well, after they allowed that, lay down the cable, the, the company had no cash really. It was not generating any cash and it went out of business. Therefore, my stock went down to zero. Now, when that happened, you assume the stock went down to zero during the last day of the year, during the last day of the year. So if it happens April 2nd, well, you would say, well, the date of my worthless securities, the transaction took place at 1231 for that year. What type of a deduction do you have? That's very important. So let's assume you purchase the stock March 1st of 20X1. Then the stock, then the stock goes down to zero the following year, February, February 4th, 20X2. Okay? Now this is less than a year. This is approximately 11 months. Well, this is short term. Well, no, it doesn't. What you would do, you would assume that you held the stock from March 1st, 20X1 until December 31st, 20X2. And this makes it a long term capital loss. Now, assuming you purchased it in March and it went bust in May, June, July during that year X1, then it will be short term. Now, remember, losses will give you a deduction. A capital losses give you a deduction maximum of 3000 or you can use them against capital gains. Now we need to discuss what is section 1244 stock, 1244 stock. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Section 1244 stocks are stocks of companies that don't exceed $1 million in the money raised. So the total amount or other property received by the corporation for the stock as a contribution to capital, which is common stock or paid in surplus, does not exceed a $1 million. Simply put, a company started and the maximum when they started, they debited cash or other property for a million and their common stock or capital surplus or whatever you want to call the equity does not exceed a million. What are we talking about here? We're talking about small business, small businesses. You might be saying a million dollar is a lot of money. Well, for you and I is a lot of money. But when you look at corporation and you compare those corporation, million dollar corporation to billions and now Apple and Google are trillion dollar corporation, those are small businesses. So what happened if you invest in those stocks and those small business stock? Well, what happened if you invest in them? You're going to get the best of two words. So when it comes to taxes, you're going to get the best of two words. If you have a gain on that stock, well, it's going to be taxed as a long term capital gain. Even if you held it for less than a year, it's going to be long term capital gain. So it's going to be taxed tax at either zero, which is no taxes, 15 or 20 percent, depending on your long term capital gain. It's never considered ordinary income, even if it was short term capital gain. Then what about a loss? Well, when you have a loss, the loss is considered ordinary loss. Well, what does that mean? It means it's not a capital loss. There is no three thousand dollar limit on 12 section 1244 stock. So ordinary loss treatment per year is limited to guess what? $50,000 if you're single and $100,000 for married filing jointly. And that's a lot of deduction. This means you can take the losses against your W-2 wages up to 50,000 if you are single. 
Now, losses that are in excess of this amount, whether it's 50 or $100,000, they are treated as capital losses for future years, which you can either use against your capital gains or start to deduct $3,000 per year. Now, why the generosity? Well, Congress wants to encourage capital providers, it means investors, people with money, to invest in small businesses. How do they encourage you to do that? Well, they would say, go ahead and invest. Your gain will be treated as a long-term ca long capital gain. And if the business did not succeed, we're going to treat your losses as ordinary losses. That's the best of both worlds. And the reason is to create more job and stimulate the economy by encouraging people, people with money, to invest in other small businesses. Let's take a look at an example for Section 1244 stock. Let's assume Adam purchases from XYZ Corporation's stock costing 170. So Adam invested in this corporation. The total common stock outstanding for this company is 800,000. This makes it Section 1244 stock. The following year, 20x8, Adam sells the stock for 80,000. It was for 90,000. It was not a good investment. Adam generated losses of $80,000. Now, Adam is a single taxpayer, so losses of $80,000 here. So, how we're going to treat this? Of that $80,000, $50,000 will be considered what? Will be considered against ordinary losses and it will be used against W 2 wages or any other ordinary income. What's left is 30,000. The remaining 30,000, it's going to be considered long term capital loss. It's going to reduce future capital gains in future years, or you can deduct 3,000 of it, you know, in the next following, the, the following years until it's used up. Let's take a look at another example. Adam and Maria filed a joint return. Salaries were 130,000. Loss on sale of section 1244 stock purchased two years ago, 120,000. That's a loss. Gain on sale of section 1244 purchased seven months ago, 27,000. Non-business bad debt, 12,000. Compute their adjusted gross income or simply put what's their net gross income. Well, here's what's gonna happen. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is salaries. They have 130,000 in salaries. We're gonna be using 100,000 of this. Remember they are married filing jointly. You're gonna be used 100,000 to deduct it against their salaries, their married filing jointly. They could deduct up to 100,000. Remember, this is section 1244. Now, they still have losses of 30,000. Next thing you do is you will take their gains on section 1244, which is long-term capital gains, and you will deduct this against short-term capital loss, non-business bad debt. Remember, non-business bad debt is always short-term capital loss. So let's do that. So we're going to take 27,000 of gains minus 12,000 of capital losses. We're going to have 15,000 of now lo uh, section 1244 gains. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to have, sorry, we're going to have twenty thirty thousand $30,000 left from salary. So salaries... $30,000 still taxable and we still have from the 120 gains let's take a look at another example Adam and Maria file a joint return salaries 130,000 loss on sale of section 1244 stock purchased two years ago 120 gain on sale of section 1244 stock purchased seven months ago 27,000 Non-business bad debt is 12,000. Let's compute their taxable income or adjusted gross income. It doesn't matter what, what, what do you want to call it, but let's go ahead and perform this computation. The first thing I'm gonna do is of this 120,000, since this is a loss on section, section 1244, I'm gonna use 100,000 of it against salaries. Why? Because I can use it, although it's, it's, it's a stock, but I can use it against ordinary income. So I'm going to use 100,000 of section 1244. Therefore, what's left in my taxable income is 30,000. Now what's left from this 120 is 20,000 of losses. Then I'm going to take section 1244 stock purchase seven months ago, which is long-term capital gain. And I'm going to reduce it against short-term capital loss. Remember, non-business debt is a short-term capital loss. We looked at this in another session. Therefore, if I take 27 of gains, 
12,000 of short-term capital losses. What I'm left with is 15,000 long-term capital gain. Now what I'm gonna do, that 15,000 long-term capital gain. Now I'm gonna be using the, of that, I'm gonna be using 15,000 of long-term capital loss, long-term long -term capital loss, and r reduce this to, to zero that I'm gonna have left. So I'm, since I reduce this, since I used up 15,000 out of this loss, what I'm left is 5,000. So basically the gain is all gone. I'm left with 5,000. And of this 5,000, what can I do? I can deduct 3,000. You remember I can take $3,000 per year. So I'm gonna take this 3,000. So I'm gonna reduce this 30,000 by 3,000. Now my taxable income, what's left is 27,000. And of the 5,000, I still have 2,000 capital loss I can use for future years few things to remember here the first thing what students make the common mistakes that students make they take the losses and the gains from section 1244 and they net them don't make this mistake because the government gives you the the option not the option the right to take the losses of 12 section 1244 against your ordinary income you can deduct 100,000 the first thing you do your best in interest is to reduce your salaries we reduce the salaries to 30,000 and we kept the 20,000 for later. Then we reduce the 27,000 long-term capital gain against the short-term capital loss. And that kept us with 15,000. Then we used the 20,000 from the losses to reduce the gain down to zero. We're left with five. We can deduct an additional 3,000 this year and the remaining 2,000 for future years. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at MCQs. That's gonna help you with worthless securities and section 1244 stock good luck study hard invest in yourself whether you are a cpa candidate accounting student or an enrolled agent and stay safe